Hello everyone, welcome to Scorched Earth Toys at Indymoon.com's review of Takatoko's Metal Mini SDF-1 toys. These toys are a little different from the other Macross Collection series toys in that they're not specifically named Macross Collection toys, nor do they say their scale on their box. The deluxe version of the toy came pre-packaged with a VF-1J toy. That VF-1J has its own gun. The SDF-1 toy has some line art on cardboard that it comes with. The deluxe version has three pieces of line art. Mine had the VF-1J, the Defender, and the Tomahawk. The basic version only comes with the SDF-1 and one piece of line art. Mine was the VF-1J. So here's the VF-1J that comes bundled with the deluxe version. You can see it's silver, there's a lot of metal to it, um, but this isn't a review for that toy, so we're gonna put that aside and take a closer look at these SDF-1 toys. Now I got a little sunburn on my normal version here, uh, but it still functions just like it did back in the day, uh, which means it still has the same fault of all of these toys, and that is that the back gun booms only attach by one peg, and so they're rather loose and can fall off on you. Otherwise, you could see kind of the detail of it all, fairly sparse. Could definitely use some decals to brighten it up. And that's where the deluxe version comes in with uh, metallic paint and pre-applied decals that really do pop. Now, from an articulation standpoint, you only have a couple uh, joints that you can work with. There are arms that rotate and there are legs that go out like so. Now these legs are entirely metal. It gives the toy a nice bit of heft and again makes it seem like it would have fit well with the collector series toys. But really that's all there is to them. Here's a quick scale comparison specifically with SDF-1 toys and as you can see this is your smallest available option which maybe gives it a little bit of charm. Here's a line art comparison, and, and given that it is the smallest option available, it's actually not a bad rendition of the line art. Uh, the one thing that really jumps out at you as a glaring deficiency are all those gaps in the plastic that were probably used to decrease the cost of production. Being metal and about 13 centimeters tall, the Metal Mini SDF-1 goes well with Takatoko's Collector's line. So there was the Collector's 1240 scale monster toy, and the 1144 Destroid and VF-1 toys that are about that size. So it fits in with that line fairly well from a size, not scale perspective. Uh, it did, the deluxe version did come with this VF-1 toy, which is roughly 115 scale. And then obviously for visual purposes, this is a 1100 VF-1 off to the right. So there you go, that's gonna be how it fits in with your collection. Mega House recently gave us our first modern take on the TV SDF-1 in quite a while. Before that, you had a smattering of Takatoka releases to choose from, including these metal miniatures, the Henke, and the 16300 Super Real version. This toy very much feels like the bargain version of the Super Real version. No firing effects, less articulation. Um, so, it was accessible, it had some metal to it, some heft. The deluxe version in particular does still make a, a fine display piece. There's obviously some weird hollow bits, probably cheaping it out a little bit, um, but not bad. Now you know what you're getting into. You can decide for yourself how much you'd be willing to spend on something like that. Check out anymoon.com for my full article, and as always, thanks for watching.